My name is Susan Stockdale, and I'm the author and illustrator of Stripes of All Types, Rayas de Todas las Tallas. So this is a Spanish-English bilingual book, and I'm so proud to be a part of the Pennsylvania One Book Every Young Child program, which selected this book for 2014. I'm going to read the book and talk a little bit about how I created it and how it can be used by you all. Stripes of All Types. This is called the half title page, which has the title of the book, the name of the author and the illustrator, that's me, and the name of the publisher, Peachtree Publishers. Stripes found in water. Sliding through weeds. Drinking from rivers and darting through reeds. Hey, I think this is a rhyming book. Toting a shell, twisting on sand, sprawled in a lair, and sprinting on land. Prowling the prairie, perched on a peak. Crawling on cactus and camped by a creek. Propped on a log, poised on a leaf. Scaling a ridge and scouting a reef. Stripes found in forests. Stripes found on farms. Stripes found with children curled in their arms. So when I came up with the idea for this book, I always knew I was gonna have children holding kitty cats on the last page. And hey, by the way, the cats are related to the tiger that we saw earlier, the largest wild cat in the world. So they're my kids holding cats. And on the next page, I identify all the different animals, why they have stripes, where they live, and what kind of animal they are. So this is really a science book. This is a non-fiction book because it's not make-believe. It's about real information about real animals. And I have a matching game. So at the back of the book, when you become familiar with the animals, you can say, Gee, I wonder if I can find the animal that belongs to these stripes. And you might think it's easy, but hmm, you have to actually pay attention. So here you might say, that's a cactus bee, or this is a purple striped jellyfish, or this is a tiger, but can you find the zebra stripes? Sometimes it's not that easy. You might think this is the zebra stripe, but no, that belongs to the zebra swallowtail butterfly. You might think that this is the zebra stripe, but no, that belongs to the ringtail lemur. So you have to pay attention. So this book is really all about ways in which animals around the world benefit from their stripes. So it's a science book. So when I research the book, I work with scientists at the Smithsonian Institution's National Museum of Natural History because I love learning about new things. And I love working with experts to find out all the information I needed to know about this book. So first I wrote the book and then I did all the illustrations. But I learned, for example, from the scientists and from my bone book research, that the ringtail lemur, which lives off the coast of Africa in Madagascar, has a striped tail, a ringtail, and oftentimes those animals will hold their tail straight up in the air to stay together as a group. So they're like little flags in the air. That's so cute. And the American bittern, hey, that animal must live in America if it's got the name American bittern. I like putting in names where you might make the connection between the name and the animal and where it lives. That animal lives in the marsh. We might see that animal somewhere nearby if we're out on a river. And it's camouflaged by its striped chest and it also puts its beak up in the air and it actually pretends like it's a reed. So its behavior actually mimics the reeds that are around it. That's pretty smart. That's my Florida tree snail. Hmm, I wonder where that animal might live if its name is the Florida tree snail. This is the moray eel. Here I have my tiger. Gosh, I even had to do research on what kind of leaves would be found in the habitat with a tiger in Central Asia. So because I do nonfiction, every single thing I put in my book has to be correct, even if it's something you might not ask about if you're a young reader.
I love the zebras on the Serengeti in Africa. You see all their stripes? Here's what happens with those stripes. They cause confusion. So a predator might say, I want to attack a zebra today, but it can't pick out one animal in the herd because there's so many stripes going in different directions. So it's fascinating to me how stripes benefit creatures and help them survive. That's the American badger. He's prowling the prairie. Hey, those are my favorite words in the entire book because prowling and prairie, hey, they sound the same. Those first two letters are similar. And that's very pleasing to the ear. It's very, very pretty. And he is prowling and he is on the prairie. So it all, those words work together because hey, this is a picture book. So my words and my pictures have to work together so that if you looked at the picture, you might be able to figure out what's happening and then you see the words and it helps you even further understand what I'm trying to show you. So the book goes on and on with all these beautiful animals. What I love is you can use it in many different ways. It's a book about language arts because it's got rhythm, stripes found in water, sliding through weeds, drinking from rivers and darting through reeds. So I love words that have an anchor for you to understand them and it rhymes. You can go in the book and pick out all the rhymes. You can pick out all the words that sound the same, like prowling and prairie and, and scaling and scouting, because I did that on purpose. It's also a book about geography. Where are these habitats? They're all over the world. Take out a map, figure out where these animals live. What kinds of habitats do they live in? How are they different from one another? So that's really a science book, right? So how is a marsh different from the plain in Africa? different from the American prairie, different from the desert, different from the ocean. It's so fun, there's so much to learn about in, in the world. It's also a book about math because it's all about stripes. So for example, even here with the skunk, count the number of stripes and think about it. Patterns, sequencing, that's the foundation for math, right? And it's also a book about movement because you can look at the words. You can say, what does darting mean? It means running fast. Sprinting means running fast too. What is scouting? You're searching for something. What does poised mean? It means you're really carefully balanced on something. Words are so beautiful. So I was very fortunate to grow up uh, in a family which loved language. My mother was a published poet. So throughout the day, she would string these rhyming words together. And at a very young age, I realized words are really fun. You can have a great time with words. Hey, guess what else? They're free. You can just pick out any word you wish to speak or to write. And so I, I grew up really appreciating language, but my mother also, and my parents, both my parents and other caregivers read early and often to me, which is exactly what the Pennsylvania One book, Every Young Child, recommends. And it certainly worked for me because I'm actually writing books today because I love reading and writing and language and, and nature so much. So I can't say enough about uh, the, 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 the concept behind the Pennsylvania One Book Program, and I'm so honored to be a part of it, and I hope that you enjoy using stripes of all types in many different ways. Thanks so much.